Hey, how are you doing today? I hope you're having an awesome day. Today, we're going to talk about the striking anvil, what it is, what its purpose is, why I like it, why it is that you see me using this more than any other anvil in the workshop. So the striking anvil is an anvil that I use almost exclusively when I'm working with somebody who's swinging a sledgehammer. Now, this striking anvil is made with a mild steel plate that has the measurements of 12 inches by 5 inches wide on the top, and in this particular case it's 2 inches thick with an inch plate and then, no, a 3 quarter inch plate and then an inch thick plate. That's what I had at the time. Ideally, you know, your striking anvil would probably be between 2 and 3 inches thick with then an inch on the bottom and then your legs welded underneath that. So naturally it's not a hugely heavy anvil. The entire weight of this anvil is probably only about 75 pounds or so. It's really not that heavy. But why is it that we can forge with it with sledges and do big work? Well, the reason is, is that this is mounted to the ground very solidly with 5 8 inch chemically anchored bolts. The top on this striking anvil is made of mild steel. And the reason for that is I'm doing a lot of work with beginner strikers and you might well be too. A beginner striker is very likely and very liable to miss. That's okay. It's perfectly fine to miss, especially if you've got a striking anvil. There's no risk. Nothing happens bad if you miss hit and you ding a mild steel striking anvil because all that's happened is that you're going to dent it. And I guarantee my students have made their fair shares of dents on this anvil. I've ground it off flat a couple of times, occasionally put a few little bits of weld in there to fix any serious issues. But really, there aren't serious issues because it just dings it. There are no chips taken out, which might well happen if you were to hit a high carbon faced steel anvil, normal anvil, high carbon steel face, you hit that edge of that bad boy, you can take a chip out, that thing will fly off like a bullet, and if that lands in somebody's femoral artery, that's a problem. This soft anvil is great for the beginner striker, as it means we're a lot safer. The other benefit of the soft anvil is, is hey, even if you've got an advanced striker, you're still a lot safer. Safety is important in the craft of blacksmithing. Anytime we can uh, avoid losing too much of the red stuff that uh, helps us uh, forge, we want to avoid that. Now the next reason that the striking anvil is great is because it is low down. I'd recommend not having a striking anvil any higher than 24 inches. Now, it does make directing a little bit of a pain, but once you get used to bending your knees and bending over at the hip more than in the lower back, it's actually quite comfortable and you're quite fine working at this all day long without really getting too much back pain. But for the striker, it's essential. I'll explain why. So, let's say we're making a hammer and we're about to release the drift from the hammer while forging the round die of the hammer. So we can have our cupping tool in the anvil, that's an inch of thickness. We're going to have our hammer, potentially four to four and a half inches of, uh, of height on top of that. And then we're going to have our flatter, which might well be another four inches or five inches of height. All of a sudden, we've added up and we might well be striking a foot off the top of the anvil. Now the problem is on a normal anvil, you add a foot on top, you're swinging a sledge at armpit height. That is a problem. Here, however, when you're swinging that sledge, even on top of all of that, you can get a manageable throw with the sledge and still forge hard enough to forge the material to the right amount of force with the whatever. I don't even know if I'm speaking English that much. But basically I'm saying you need to be able to have a lot of travel so that gravity can accelerate your sledge as much as possible. You don't get that travel on a high up anvil with the stack of tools. Now, of course, when it's even lower down, that's great because you get even more travel to hit the workpiece. But it's essential to have a low down anvil when we're working a stack of tools that gets much higher. So how do you make one of these striking anvils? Well, I'm going to be getting some of these top plates cut out of some plates, so you'll be able to buy them from me, and I'll let you know when that is. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you watch the videos, you'll know when it is that I'm offering these for sale. Then from there, what we need is we need a plate. Uh, you can just roughly torch cut a hole, and from there, it's onto the tubing for the legs. Make sure you use nothing less than two inch square, preferably with a wall thickness no less than three sixteenths of an inch. Uh, here, this is what, inch and a half by three inch wide material with a quarter inch wall thickness. And you don't want to cut the legs at any more than a 10 degree angle. For any more, you end up getting too much flex in the legs. You don't want that. Fill the legs with sand, that way you deaden the sound and then make sure the feet have some hefty holes in there for either staking into the dirt or bolting into the concrete. Now, if you don't want to buy yourself a plate with a pre-made hole, it's actually pretty easy to make. 
All you gotta do is drill a three quarter inch or seven eighth inch hole, heat up this plate, and then take a one inch drift and gently drive the drift in from both sides, bit by bit by bit by bit. Don't go too far too fast though. You know, when there's a black ring of coldness around the hole, stop, take the drift out, go from the other side, because otherwise you'll begin bowing the plate, which is a bad idea. Make sure you go very gently when you're doing this, otherwise you'll end up with a bowed striking anvil, which is bad. Really, there's nothing else to it. It's simple. Keep it simple. Simple's always good. I really hope you enjoy that little walk around about my striking anvil. Thank you so much for joining me while I do it. I do want to say one more thing though, if you haven't seen the other video, the hammer pre-order is live for the hammers that are going to be arriving in Christmas. I'd love it if I was given the opportunity to be able to make you a hammer. That would be great. Apart from that, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed the video, please, please, please do go ahead and hit subscribe. I make videos every single day. And if you've reached this length in the video, you've come this far in the video, please comment below, ding that bad boy up. Because this anvil, I don't mind if it gets dinged, that's the benefit of mild steel. Keep it safe, happy forging, have an awesome day. Bye-bye. <laughs>